welcome you all to the fifth episode of Curiosity, the weekly science program summing up the developments in the week number 22 of 2020. For the uninitiated, Curiosity is where I share with you all what I learned in the last week. As usual, this week's episode features stories across the disciplines, including magic mushrooms, cancer, babies, climate change, late Devonian extinction event, loneliness, Brazilian pepper tree, COVID-19 and so on. Plus observances in the next week and opportunities for the students. So please keep watching. The first story of the week is about a very interesting cruise ship expedition. Perhaps some of you know that I have been to Antarctica as part of Indian mission to Antarctica a few years back and I have written a book, it's called Voyage to Antarctica, published by DST, that is Department of Science and Technology of the Government of India. Uh, the link is given below. So we have taken the ship called Ivan Papanin. It's a Russian ship to Antarctic. We actually, the place where we went is called the, you know, you know, the continental Antarctica. But of course, there are so many ways that you can, one can go to the Antarctic islands, you know, the uh, nearby the, the Peru and Chile and Argentina, you know, the South America. So so this study published last week in the journal Thorax by the British Medical Journal BMJ uh, this have analyzed uh, such uh, you know the cruise ship passengers that is basically uh, you know the tourists uh, going to the sub Antarctic islands so the Australian team analyzed 217 Passengers of the cruise ship the study didn't say the name of the cruise ship. I wish uh, you know there is uh, the name of the cruise ship by the way I like the the study's catchy title the title is COVID-19 in the footsteps of the Ernest Shackleton Ernest Shackleton is a celebrated British or Irish rather uh, Antarctic explorer during early 20th century Shackleton went to Antarctica about endurance, you know, and it was an ill-fated uh, expedition so actually he the the ship got stuck up in packed ice of the georgian south, south georgian islands you know near the ushaya in the argentina and uh, of course uh, he couldn't actually go to the south pole but if you look at the history of the shipping history or the voyage or antarctic expedition history uh, the Shackleton's name is written in golden, you know, letters and he is much more respected than uh, the Norwegian, the Roald Amundsen, who actually went to the, he is the first guy who went to the South Pole because the Shackleton saved all of his teammates, you know, and the, as the name of the exploration or the name of the ship Endurance says, it's, it's actually the power of his determination or the endurance or the teamwork. That is what it makes the Shackleton the hero of the Antarctic explorers. And what is the relation with Shackleton and this particular study? Because this study analyzed the cruise ship passengers and the cruise ship followed the exact same trajectory, at least that was their plan, to travel along the Shackleton's footsteps on the same trajectory where the Shackleton went in 1910 or 1914s you know the expedition cruise ship depart from Ushaya in Argentina that is actually the southern tip of Argentina for the planned 21 day cruise of the Antarctic Peninsula including Elephant Island before sailing to South Georgia Island on a route similar to that taken by the British explorer Ernest Shackleton in 1915-17, the Endurance Expedition. And of course, in this ship, they had multiple hand hygiene stations were positioned throughout the ship, especially in the dining area because the ship departed after the COVID-19 stories all came out, you know. And the surprising finding of this study, 81% of the patients who tested positive were asymptomatic friends they did not have any symptoms for example no sneezing no coughing you know no headache or no fever so it's it's actually a very interesting study and very alarming study i would say uh, this is a quote from the, the paper strategies are needed to assess and monitor all passengers to prevent community transmission after the disembarkation see so the study actually went in this course they, they departed from ushaya and they crossed up drake passage and then on the way towards the south georgia they actually changed the course towards the british falkland islands and finally they went to uruguay to montevideo you know when i read this alarming story what the image that came to my mind is this kind of you know the infrared based handgun thermometers so these thermometers are everywhere throughout the world but you know you should really cast serious doubts about the efficacy of these things because 
81 percentage friends they were asymptomatic carriers so you know they don't really have any fever or any of the other symptoms but still they are very much uh, capable of infecting people so what is the point of having this kind of you know the, the thermometers all around our airports or railway stations so the study highlights the importance of maintaining the physical distancing as well as you know the, the, the wearing masks so you have to cover your nose and of course the mouth part and I've covered the mask several times in this video you can have the links below uh, for some of my earlier videos on mask and why masks are important and why mask doesn't actually lead to you know hypercapnia or hypoxia so I have debunked that myth recently and how about uh, physical distancing or stay at home you know during the lockdown does it help that is our next story Our second story of the week is about association of stay at home orders with COVID-19 hospitalization in four states. The study was published in JAMA that is uh, you know Journal of American Medical Association by a team from University of Minnesota in United States. So this study concluded that stay at home orders have had a significant effect on reducing the number of people hospitalized for COVID-19. Roughly 12 days after the people were instructed to shelter in place the number of COVID related hospitalization in each state began to dramatically deviate downward from the projections. So a quote from the paper, we found that the hospitalizations were roughly two to three times lower than what would be expected based on the initial trends. Have a look at an image from this paper. So this is what is expected. So the so-called best fit regression line, you know, the, the line dashed line in red. So this is this would have been happened in case of no stay at home order. But because of the stay at home order, you can see how the graph is progressing. So it has really and dramatically, you know, checked the community transmission. So it's really important to maintain the physical distancing and uh, uh, try avoid unnecessary travels by all means friends. The third story of the week is about early detection of the cancer. This is a story published last week in the journal Annals of Oncology by a team from Mayo Clinic in the United States and the study included 6,689 persons. By the way, you might wonder why did I pick up this particular study for this episode of the curiosity. Friends, this is a landmark paper because early detection of the cancer is extremely important and this study could able to detect more than 50 cancer types including high mortality cancers that lack screening paradigms till date you know how did the study actually progress and what was the technology or techniques which they used they adopted something called targeted methylation analysis of CF DNA so CF DNA means circulating free DNA that is nothing but free DNA molecules in our blood plasma they analyzed it and they looked at the methylation patterns by the way you might know methylation is a mechanism for the epigenetic control of the you know the expression levels of the gene right the methylation that's nothing but methyl molecules being added onto the DNA molecules and it actually controls the expression of certain genes so this is actually they are looking at the targeted methylation patterns of the circulating free DNA molecules so cancers were detected across all the stages for stage 1 to 3 the sensitivity was 43.9 and a little bit higher sensitivity of 54.9 for stage 1 to 4 uh, cancer types and specificity of more than 99 percentage and a single false positive rate of less than one percentage so these statistics are really promising and of course the study is a big step towards early detection of the cancers because early detection is extremely important to ensure proper prognosis of the cancer so that means that if you detect the cancer at a lower stage like stage one you know and chances are high that you can actually uh, live a really long life right rather than detecting the cancer at stage 4 when the cancer has metastasized that is that it has spread throughout your body right so it's really interesting study fourth story of the week is about you know the brazilian pepper tree it is nothing but an invasive species in united states especially in florida so the paper was published last week in the journal scientific report the title was Triterpenoid acids isolated from shyness terebenthifolia fruits reduced phylococcus aureus virulence and abate 
dermonecrosis by a US team. So basically, as you see that Staphylococcus aureus is a very important pathogenic organism, right? And the way it actually spread is by biofilm formation. You know, biofilm is nothing but this uh, bacteria actually forms a film-like structure. Uh, it is a community structure of the bacteria. And if you can actually break this biofilm, so that is a very good way to fight these pathogenic infections, you know? So scientists have identified specific compounds from the Brazilian pepper tree, which is a VD invasive shrub that disarm antibiotic resistance to Phylococcus aureus bacteria. So quorum sensing inhibition. So the quorum sensing is a phenomenon by which the bacteria can sense other neighboring bacteria or touching bacteria. You know, it can actually detect the presence of other bacteria and quorum sensing is very important for the formation of the biofilm. So in one sense, it is actually inhibiting the biofilm formation of this bacteria. So MRSA or methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus or multi-drug resistant Staph aureus is a big problem everywhere in the world and uh, all because of this biofilm formation. So if you can actually prevent this uh, Staph aureus to form the biofilm, then you can prevent, uh, you know, to a large extent the formation of this kind of uh, multi-drug resistant Staph aureus infections. So the study highlights the importance of the biodiversity as nature's medicine cabinet. Friends, we are going through the, the week-long celebration of the biodiversity because uh, June 5th is our uh, World Environment Day and this week's theme is biodiversity. So it's a very good time to appreciate relevance of the biodiversity conservation. So we really have to protect our biodiversity for ensuring human health as well as the health of the planet Earth. So in one sense, the study is something like the Japanese martial arts of Jiu-Jitsu, you know. So in Jiu-Jitsu, the person who is fighting is not simply wasting his or her energy on, uh, you know, defeating other person. So the person is actually using the opponent's own energy on uh, towards, you know, defeating that person. So it is, it's very interesting leveraging. So in one sense, uh, leveraging invasive species for good. Uh, you know for medicine so that's a very interesting uh, point which I really appreciate about this study so we really have to find new uses for the invasive alien species rather than simply destroying it fifth story of the week is about shrooms or magic mushrooms have you ever been to Holland friends yes I went to the Netherlands the Amsterdam few months back and yes I did try this uh, uh, magic mushrooms and it was a in uh, you know it was a very strange experience that I had Pro perhaps I can share my experience some other time and guess what this study of the shroom is by a Dutch team from Amsterdam and I love the title of this study so the title is me myself by regional alterations in glutamate and the experience of ego dissolution with psilobin well psilobin is an active ingredient of the magic mushrooms and this study was published in a reputed journal by the nature neuropharmacology so the study found that the psychedelic substance called psilobin acutely induces region dependent alterations in glutamate that correlate with ego dissolution during psychedelic state so when you are on this drug uh, you know and uh, you are going to dissolve your ego so that's very interesting finding so it provides a neurochemical basis for how psychedelics alter the sense of self and may be giving rise to therapeutic effects witnessed in clinical trials well, while reading this paper, I was just thinking about, uh, you know, narcissistic persons, right? Of course, we have uh, uh, so many friends who are extremely narcissistic and egotist, right? Perhaps I'm also ego egoist. You can, you can guess about my personality. But yes, so yeah, I sh we shouldn't be judgmental, but definitely we are, uh, you know, we are close to many people around. So how about extreme narcissism? Uh, always me first. Everyone else is second grade citizen. So those kind of people, I think it is a personality disorder. And perhaps we can use this as a potential treatment for narcissistic personality disorder. Well, maybe let us wait and watch. Coming to mental disorders, our next story of the week is about loneliness. Sixth story of the week is about loneliness. 
It was published in the last week in the journal Personality and Individual Differences by a British team. The title of the paper is Loneliness Around the World, Age, Gender and Cultural Differences in Loneliness. So this study was actually part of a BBC experiment, a BBC Radio 4, it's a very famous radio in, in the uh, England. So they ran an experiment to measure, you know, it is actually a questionnaire based survey to measure the loneliness. So the study actually had a very interesting, uh, you know, uh, the conclusions of the study so some highlights of the study includes young people are loneliest comparing with old people so old people the many studies actually reveal the old people are a lot more happy so happiness increase with age and being alone is not same as being lonely so you know if you live alone doesn't mean that you are lonely and if you live with your partner or a family you could still be lonely you know that is what there is no correlation with being alone or being lonely that's very interesting finding of the study people who feel discriminated against are more likely to feel lonely so if you are a minority group you know, if you have ever been subject to racial discrimination or economic uh, discrimination, whatever way, if, if at all you are, uh, you know, suffered of the discrimination, then you are more prone to feel loneliness in your life. People feel ashamed about feeling lonely. That is a side effect of being lonely. People who feel lonely score higher on empathy. You see, so loneliness also have got some positive attributes. People who feel lonely have on average lower levels of trust in others, you see. So if you feel lonely, then you don't trust others easily. People who feel lonely have more online only friends. So if you tend to have lots of online only friends, then you have to introspect. Are you really lonely or not? Very interesting findings. People who say they are often feel lonely report poorer health. So there is uh, an association with health and loneliness. So therefore loneliness is worrisome because it has associations with overall health. If you do feel lonely most of the time, I suggest that you need a serious introspection and uh, check it out. Do you need professional help or not? Because you know, it, it can have uh, serious ramifications in the future. Seventh story of the week is about babies. You know, it is actually a study published in uh, last week in PLOS One by a Swedish team. The title of the story is that imitation recognition and its pro-social effects in six month old infants. Very interesting paper. I love this paper a lot. Six month old infants recognize when adults imitate them and perceive imitators as more friendly. So it's a very good tactic if you really want to appear friendly to the infants, you know, you just try to imitate the infants. Uh, you know, if the infants laugh, then laugh it out in if the infants cry just cry it out the babies looked and smiled longer at an adult who imitated them as opposed to when the adult responded in other ways babies also approached them more and engaged in imitating games so you know i have always cried back at the babies who are crying in the same tone so if the baby is crying just cry then the baby will stop crying so it's i think it's a very interesting finding from the paper and if you have infants at home, it really saves a cry or two at home. So what if, if you cry at a crying baby, they, they, they get confused and they, they get interested, you know. So long as they are crying about an active issue, it usually works, friends. So give a try and see if the study works or not. An excellent way to do an independent verification of the findings. Our eighth story of the week is about a very important phenomenon that has happened almost 300 million years back in the history of the planet Earth, something called late Devonian mass extinction. You might know that we have something called big five mass extinction events, out of which one is called late Devonian after the, you know, the Carboniferous period has happened. It has wiped out a large number of species of plants and animals both in terrestrial life as well as in marine world. So the study was published last week in the journal Science Advances by AAAS by a UK team. The title of the story is UVB radiation was the Devonian Carboniferous Boundary Terrestrial Extinction Kill Mechanism. It's a very interesting landmark paper friends. Late Devonian extinction event happened 360 million years ago that killed much of the Earth's planet and freshwater aquatic life. So this new study confirmed that this event was caused by a brief breakdown of the ozone layer that shields the earth from the damaging ultraviolet or UV radiations. So the key discovery in the paper was 
malformed land plant spores in Greenland definitely due to the elevated UVB radiation so that's a very interesting thing ozone depletion happened because you know so CLO minus that is nothing but hypochlorite iron that forms when the planet gets warmed up rapidly so whenever the planet get warmed up rapidly this hypochlorite iron gets released and this is the reason for the ozone layer depletion so this is going to be the eventual consequence when the planet get warmed up you know it will invariably result in the ozone layer depletion so this is what they did it the study actually analyzed these spores you see that spores the damaged spores they actually analyzed the spores got from uh, greenland as well as andes mountains in bolivia the quote from the study is ozone loss during the rapid warming is an inherent earth system process with unavoidable conclusion that we should be alert for such an eventuality in the future warming world well this is an eye opener for all of us right now our planet is going through one of the remarkable warming period in its history you know the global warming is at its alarming rates and we really have to be worried about uh, ozone layer depletion that could be uh, a seculae of this warming through hypochlorite iron so the study is definitely an eye-opener by the way during this COVID-19 not many people are talking about climate change right that's actually very very bad do you ever wonder how much money we really need to curb the you know the, the carbon emissions as well as for the climate change and how much money did we spend for COVID-19 have you ever thought about this with this problem yes that is the you know our ninth story of the week is about this matter Ninth story of the week is a paper published in a journal called Lancet Planetary Health. I never knew that Lancet has a, a journal called Planetary Health. The Lancet, by the way, is a very famous British journal of medicine. You know, it's a health journal and uh, they also have a, the journal on planetary health. Very interesting. And I love the spirit of the Lancet for having a journal on the planetary health. So the title of this study is that what can COVID-19 teach us about responding to the climate change and the study was by uh, Australian and Kenyan scientists published last week in this journal. And the conclusion is that governments have spent 8 trillion to help combat COVID-19 in just 10 weeks friends. So last 10 weeks governments around the world have spent 8 trillion. Now on the other hand how much is needed in coming decade to combat the effects of the climate change in order to aggressively reduce emissions to achieve the 1.5 degrees celsius global warming goal any guesses how much money is required for that friends it is just 1.8 trillion it's only a fraction of the money that we have already spent for combating covid 19 for the last 10 weeks i'm saying this is about the coming decade the whole decade we need to spend only 1.8 trillion but still people are not ready you know uh, because people don't really think much about the cl climate change because climate change is a very slow process and it really you know it doesn't happen in a lifetime so that is why people are heedless we don't really care about our children the future of the world you know so the new study suggests that we need only 1.8 trillion just a fraction of what we have spent on COVID-19 yes the health of the planet matters most arguably much higher than the health of human beings yet we tend to overlook it that is a sad reality and a quote from this paper is we should treat this situation that is the climate change with the same urgency as the covid 19 pandemic before we risk additional disruptions of incalculable magnitudes yes we should trust our science and scientists friends not politics and politicians our 10th story of the week is a paper published last week in the journal scientific reports by the nature publishing group the title of the study is that a high biodiversity mitigates the impact of the ocean acidification on hard bottom ecosystems and this is done by an italian team from Stazione zoologica di napoli naples in italy perhaps you know what the ocean acidification is all about acidification is a consequence of the climate change friends atmospheric carbon dioxide gets mixed with the ocean to form carbonic acid leading to acidification of the ocean so the ph of the oceans are going down very slowly though it is ph is in you know it is in logarithmic scale so a little bit change is dramatic consequences are alarming coral reef and other calcareous animals you know and microbes die leading to large-scale ecological imbalance 
Given the climate change scenarios predicted for the future, researchers in this new study conclude that biodiversity conservation of hard bottom ecosystems is fundamental for mitigating the impact of the ocean acidification. So hard bottom ecosystem is something like this. You can see that calcareous coralline uh, red algae and other brown algae you can see assemblage and the bottom is really hard. It's not really soft ecosystem. So hard bottom ecosystem is a marine ecosystem which is hard you see and what the study f says is that a, a richer biodiversity of hard bottom ecosystem will be a very good option to prevent or you know to mitigate the effects of the ocean acidification so a quote from the paper is our results indicate that at a higher biodiversity of hard bottomed ecosystems the impact of acidification on otherwise highly vulnerable key organisms can be reduced by 50 to more than 90 percentage depending on the species and yes this picture by United States Geological Survey is our picture of the week. This week's COVID-19 related treatment or vaccine updates. So amongst the treatment, we have two candidates at the phase three clinical trials. By the way, phase three clinical trials are the final clinical trials before it's being available in the market. So it is Jalid Sciences Remdesivir and Royvan Sciences Jim Silumab, that is a monoclonal antibody. So these two are in the final stage of the clinical trials. And coming to the vaccines, last week we have one candidate entered into phase two clinical trial, that is by Moderna Therapeutics. So now the Moderna Therapeutic is one step ahead of all the five candidates which are in phase one trials: BioNTech, CanSino Biologics. Innovio Pharmaceuticals, University of Oxford, Sinovac and BioNTech. So another of the story from the last week is that one study shows the key to happiness is visiting more places and having new and diverse experiences. It's about the traveling. So will the traveling will give you the happiness? The uh, study says yes. So real world exposure to fresh and varied experiences and increases in the positive emotions. So that is what the study concluded. So by the way, you really don't have to physically travel. You can simply plan the trip. So even just planning the trip, uh, for example, if you want, if you have never been to Andes Mountains in Peru or Chile, uh, you can simply plan a trip, uh, execute, you know, day by day, you can make a plan, then you can still feel a bit of benefit, you know, uh, instead of traveling and burning a lot of fossil fuels, very interesting. And also a number of places, uh, for example, Eiffel Tower, if you have never been there, you can go to virtual Eiffel Tower, you can simply walk around uh, or museums, you know, that will also help you to visit the places with, where you have never been to. Another news from the last week is a study, uh, you know, it's about the personality traits that authoritarian personality traits are associated with the belief in determinism, that is the fate, you know, there is a determinism. Well, determinism has got religious connotations too. So if you ask me what is my personality trait, you can also take a pers free personality test a lot of websites will give you uh, this uh, you know the uh, checking the the bricks pairs personality type mine is intj uh, which is also many people consider it to be authoritarian but well i don't i don't believe in the the, the destiny or the fate uh, but still that is what the paper concludes uh, it's a very interesting paper so next uh, uh, news from the last week is from the nature that the blind people who were sighted before becoming blind could see the letters after a precise pattern of electrical pulses was delivered as part of their brains involved in visual processing. It's something like cyborg, you know, it's like a man machine interface. Yet another news in, from the last week is a paper published in a journal called Frontiers in Psychology and this, this is via the Cypost. So the study found that, P, the, you know, if you repeat the F word, the F word, the derogatory word, during an ice water experiment, increase the subject's tolerance and threshold for the pain. Very interesting. You know, if you swear out, uh, the, the threshold for the pain increases. So the ice experiment means that if you ever jumped in ice cold water in uh, harsh winter, of course, come on. How can you, uh, you know, can you ever take even a cold shower during the winter days? 
they're quite horrible isn't it but it's not that tough actually the study also found that if you recite made up swear words that is uh, you know that is artificial words uh, supposed to be the swear words but it didn't have any effect you know showed no such pain reducing effect so it's actually it's something like a negative control in that study so the real swear words do have some effect so maybe that's a tip for you to survive in such situations you know and the next paper is from uh, the cell it's a it's a great journal so they identified a gene called ALK and this is associated with thinness you might wonder some people are always thin isn't it uh, some of your friends are like that what no matter what the person is eating she or he and the person will never put on weight having to observe it and this study did a GWAS so that is genome wide association study so they are comparing the genomes of uh, case and control to see what is the unique polymorphism that is expressed only in in the case of the cases so that means the thin people while uh, genes which are not there in the uh, controls or express expression patterns so that is something called GWAS very interesting case control study so scientists identify the gene linked with the thinness to the people that can eat anything and not gain weight so they use genetic database of more than 47,000 people in the Estonia the European country to identify a gene linked to thinness that may play a role in resisting weight gain in these metabolically healthy thin people and the gene is ALK gene Yet another paper published last week is uh, about the students, you know. So the paper is about psychology. There is a, a syndrome called imposter syndrome. So, so the imposter syndrome is that the feeling that you don't belong or have uh, skills or intelligence. You know, you always feel that less smart. So smart people usually feel less smart while uh, less smart people always feel it's they're really smart. So the study analyzed uh, the students who are first in their entire family to go to the university. That is, they are actually first generation university students. They are at greater risk of experiencing this imposter syndrome. And uh, that this study included 818 uh, people and that looked at the competitive nature of STEM courses. So next news is about COVID-19. So uh, COVID-19 patients testing positive for the second infections are not contagious study shows. So that's very interesting news. So the people testing second time, usually what happened is that it's not that uh, infectious virus. So non-infectious viral particles or mRNA uh, can result that the test will become positive though they are not infectious. So uh, it's some interesting news and it's, 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 a, it's in fact, it's a good news. So next news is from India. Call mining has been approved at Dehing Patkai rainforest in Assam so that's not a good news at all this is something called Amazon of the East you know so it's it's the Assam's only rainforest Dehing Patkai is having a wonderful wildlife including uh, you know the mammals uh, around 40 plus species of mammals wild birds are 300 plus reptiles butterflies fishes major trees you know orchids or lots of uh, you know endangered species they hosted but now that they are on the verge of destruction because of the mining so it's not a good news at all yet another alarming news from india is from the rajasthan that it's rajasthan sees spike in wildlife poaching during uh, you know the covid 19 lockdown so it's not a good news at all by the way this site monga bay is very interesting for environment related stories next news is right here in batinda you see that but i live in a place called batinda in punjab right so here every evening you can see that there are a lot of smoke coming up so i wondered what is actually happening so i came across the story that there is a spike in stubble burning incidents in punjab so it's a harvest season here in punjab and people simply burn the crop residues the wheat residue so that is actually alarming so as you might know that the air pollution has actually increased the risk of the COVID-19 a lot of studies have shown that so air pollution is number one cause of the environmental related death you see so we really have to control this air pollution by all means friends next news is about education system in India especially school education you know in India the school education system puts a higher emphasis on grades than on practical learning thus encouraging practice like late night studies and changes in eating and sleeping routines during weekdays and weekends you know that is actually a quote from news in the research matters so what is happening is that because the students are under tremendous pressure for the grade based thing so that is actually not a good way at all isn't it so the school should be outcome oriented the school education or the teachers so they shouldn't overly emphasize on the final grade that is a big problem in India 
and here what is happening is adolescents have disturbed sleep patterns and circadian rhythm because they are they are actually overworking on the weekends as well as in the weekdays in the night time so definitely we really have to change our school education system we shouldn't pay much attention to their final grades friends so the purpose of education or teaching is that knowledge impartation isn't it you are helping the, the students to learn the, the you know the trajectory of the learning curve the role of teachers in the society has to be as a facilitator you know not really a, a teacher centric teacher is not a god or something we should just facilitate the, the knowledge learning process you see so the grades are not that important so exactly this is what is argued in this week's science you know the triple a science the magazine's editorial so it's a wonderful editorial so this this editorial do argue that suspend test and rankings uh, because of this uh, you know covid 19 lockdown at least in this semester we shouldn't pay much attention to the school uh, you know the school students as well as the university students grades or the ranks of the university so uh, this is not the time to discuss those things so this is we all the whole world is going through the alarming situation it's time for us to help each other including our students here is another story from punjab or himachal pradesh rather that the tribune reports a very interesting story that kangra tea can boost immunity against covid 19 claims a himachal pradesh lab scientist uh, the scientist belongs to a csar lab and it's kind of funny because uh, you know the, the scientific consensus right now is that there is nothing called immune boosters against covid 19 there is not a single solution for that and uh, the herbal or uh, home remedies doesn't work who has also advised against people doing all these things you know it is not really part of the scientific temperament people will you know simply drink kangra tea and they might think that uh, drinking kangra tea will increase their immune immunity against covid 19 and they will go out and they mingle with people they will think that uh, you know they will be having a false sense that they are immune to the covid 19 which is incorrect so the last week i also came across a very interesting sweet and this sweet is called uh, corona special kakra immunity booster well you know the uh, the advertising propagandists are simply celebrating the coronavirus pandemic i would say with this immune booster claim immunity booster it doesn't work simple don't believe in this nonsense i have featured about this immunity booster many times in this uh, in my channel as well another disturbing news is that it has been released by breakthrough science society or bss very interesting uh, so i have tremendous respect on this society bss they are doing a wonderful job in the country and this uh, you know this this statement or rather a press release is that in uh, you know in a museum in kolkata called birla industrial and technological museum or birla science museum you see very famous museum they installed something called ayurvedic disinfectant tunnel a tunnel where the even the children have to pass through so that the children will be subjected to a disinfectant spray with uh, you know an, a large number of chemicals including two this is two one one combination of thyme camphor and menthol now friends no please don't subject our kids to this kind of uh, immunity the chemical spray it doesn't work and more than it's dangerous what the world health organization have categorically stated that disinfectant should never be sprayed onto the body of human beings the circular is in diametric opposite to the who's guidelines so please don't do that if you are watching this show from kolkata i suggest you avoid going to the, this museum altogether because this is not a good idea at all well coming to lots of fake news i have covered how to detect fake news earlier in this channel as well one of the video is all about uh, the tricks that i do as part of uh, detecting the fake you know the alt fake news as well as alternative uh, facts or uh, the post truth right last week i came across a very interesting applet inside the whatsapp so whatsapp based fake news busters something called satya nueshi simply go to this site uh, link is given in below so satya nueshi.net in your mobile phone and you can simply click here this site uh, when you open this site in inside your mobile phone or you simply create a contact called satya nueshi uh, this is a number that you have to contact and then send a message to that uh, contact inside your uh, you know whatsapp whatever thing you whatever questions you have or whatever the news seemingly hawks that you heard for example recently in my my own university faculty group i heard a news that nobel prize winner from japan have claimed that covid 19 is a lab made you know it's it's a lab made it's a made man-made designed in wuhan in china and then i simply put it really the japanese scientists did it so it will say that 
the claim is the suko honjo and textual rating is false so it can bust these kind of fake news immediately simply just ask uh, this uh, you know this whatsapp contact uh, the, for the uh, you know the re reliability of this news i will tell you is it really fake or uh, you know reliable or not or it can simply clarify your doubt also the hoax busting also is the everything is a very interesting uh, tool i would say I, I totally appreciate the developers of this tool Satya Nuishi. Coming to observances of the next week, June 1 is Go Barefoot Day. Do you like going barefoot? I love going barefoot in the park. But make sure that there are no sharp pieces, metal pieces or glass pieces while walking barefoot in your park. June 3rd is United Nations World Bicycle Day as well as Global Running Day. So it's a very important day for me. I'm also a runner come cyclist. So I love both of these uh, activities. So yes, let us uh, bike to work that is actually doing a good favor to the environment. June 4 is Hug Your Cat Day. If you're a cat lover like me, I love cats a lot. So Hug Your Cat Day is coming on June 4th. So June 5th is World Environment Day. So it's perhaps the most important observance of the coming week is World Environment Day. June 5th is also an international day for fight against illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing. By the way, friends, illegal fishing is one of the very important cause of uh, declining fish species. You know, it is driving many of the fish species to extinction. So we really have to be vigilant towards uh, this illegal fishing, uh, both happening in the marine as well as in riverine ecosystems. Coming to astronomy related observances, if you want to view Mercury, June 4th is the best day. Mercury at its greatest eastern elongation that happens in June 4th. And June 5th is penumbral lunar eclipse. So penumbral means it is not complete. You know, it's a partial lunar eclipse. And yes, we can see that here in parts of the Asia. So uh, have a look in the night sky of the June 5th to witness the penumbral lunar eclipse. Coming to opportunities for the students and researchers, ISER Tirupati postdoctoral research program is open now. Last date is 8 June. India CUPB lecture workshop series called Tangled Bank in connection with World Environment Day is open. Last date is 5th June. The Tangled Bank workshop is organized by us and it features 14 different topics by very interesting speakers from various research institutions uh, you know uh, worldwide so it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity and uh, there is no entry fee and you are eligible for a free digital certificate so uh, go ahead and the link is given below have a look and here is a very important notice by national testing agency that is nta the public notice uh, it has actually extended uh, the the last date of many of these uh, you know important uh, examinations that includes Indira Gandhi National Open University or IGNO entrance exam, Indian Council of Agricultural Research exam, JNU entrance exam, UGC National Eligibility Test, and join UGC CSAR NET for the June. All uh, the deadlines are now extended up to 15th June. So it's a, I think it's a very important announcement for the students. We also have several new courses in the UGC Swayam including my own course just released and as you can see that it's a 12 weeks uh, course starts from 13th of July and exam date is 15th November and enrollment ends at 31st August. So all these courses are open now so please go and have a look at Swayam Central link is given below. So that sums up this week's curiosity. To keep updated when the new episode is released please click the subscribe icon and subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, please click thumbs up. See you again and have a great day.